Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba amidst the buzz and energy of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Now, amidst the conference event, we seized the opportunity to engage with local leaders from across the province. We delve into the pressing issues and accomplishments confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders in the province. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Reeve Jim Funk from the rural municipality of Hanover. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration. At Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Reeve, thank you so much for doing this. I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one, if you don't mind. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? I have always served in the community. Uh, I was born and raised in, in the Gruntal area, okay. in the RM of Hanover, and uh, I've always been somewhat of a servant in one way or another, and uh, I had a friend that actually was uh, a counselor, and uh, I found uh, great interest in <laughs> the local municipal uh, affairs, and that is probably where the seed was planted. So how long ago was that? That was back in the early 80s. Okay. So do you mind me asking when the first time you ran? Yes. I, uh, I started up uh, 15 years ago, roughly. Okay. And I started as uh, uh, an LUD member in the local urban district. Were you part of the amalgamation process? Uh, I was part of the amalgamation as far as... Like, because 10 years ago, the province came down and asked the municipalities mm -hmm. to amalgamate for anyone under 1,000. And w was that the LUD part of that? or no, no, we oh, Okay. Were, we were not. Because I'm still trying to figure out that whole LUD issue okay. <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> Manitoba municipalities. Yeah. So you you get elected as a councillor for the LUD of Hanover. Abs yeah, you're correct. Okay. Yeah. So that's 15 years ago. How does, the, how does someone become then reap? <laughs> So, so I did eight years with the LUD, yep. and uh, from the LUD I um, became counselor. So I did four years in, in council as a counselor, and, uh, and it just happened that our present Reeve was retiring, and uh, council was strongly urging me to <laughs> commit and uh, run for the position of the Reeve of Arvin, Hanover. So in 15 years on council, mm -hmm. in many different aspects, has the role of council changed, do you think? The role of council has changed dramatically, not necessarily maybe in the 15 years. I'm sure it has changed a little bit. But from the 80s, from when, when I uh, you know, became interested in uh, local municipal uh, mm -hmm. uh, affairs, uh, it has changed drastically. How so? You know, back in the day when, or uh, a friend of mine, the counselor, at, you know, you were, you were able to, uh, he was able to, you know, barter a little bit with, <laughs> with different companies and make things happen within communities, right? And I'm speaking of uh, gravel pit particular. Yeah. Arm of Hanover has a lot of gravel pits, so. So, uh, and we always need gravel on roads. So he was able to, you know, make some... Negotiate without yes, going yes. to the... <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that has changed very much. So, so now everything gets done through the RM of Hanover. Uh, none of council nor Reeve or, you know, it's all public workers that, you know, that are hired for certain positions and they take care of uh, 
those those uh, needs. So for you, because I can imagine as a political observer from the 80s till now, I can imagine you have seen sort of, and, and I say this with respect to Canadians across the country, because I don't think it's a Manitoba issue. I think it's a Canadian issue. I truly believe, and this is me, the host saying this, that there is there's an apathy when it comes to municipal governance and municipal politics. People don't understand the role, the clarity, the issues that municipalities are dealing with on a day-to-day basis. Would you disagree with that statement in the RM of Hanover? When you ask people for their opinion on issues, will they give you their opinion? <laughs> Asking, knowing the answer? <laughs> Gladly will they give you opinion, even if you don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, but, I should laugh. But yeah, continue. No, no, that is just it's just the nature of the beast, right? Uh, you know. And but is it the opinion of what's going on at council, or is it the opinion of federal or provincial jurisdictional, like healthcare, which is not a municipal issue, but municipalities are dealing with it? Education, again, not a, yeah. <laughs> or even, which I've heard from a few uh, municipal leaders here in Manitoba, s- things on a global stage mm. that literally the municipality have no yes, issue yes. with. But are you hearing more f- provincial, m- federal jurisdictional questions? Or are they asking you what's going on with that wastewater treatment facility or what's going on with that uh, road that needs to be plowed? Boy, you're asking me uh, probably six seven questions here which i, I would I like tr- to I, I would I, like to answer okay uh, i'll start with uh yes covid and and i hate bringing covid up but covid w- was exactly when i start when i ran for reeve okay and uh probably one of the things that was asked the most was what would you do as uh reeve uh, in this with covid and the rules and regulations well you know what municipal has nothing to do with provincial affairs and guidelines and and, and ruling, okay? We have to abide by their rules, Mm -hmm. and and we did so also. But that has divided people, you know, and not just people, even families we've seen uh, in many cases. But as I'm as I'm going walking door to door, that was a very common question. Probably the most asked is, "What would you do?" Wow. And my answer was very simple. I will respect you as an individual and your thoughts and your wishes and wants, and I will respect you. And uh, that and that is the most I can do, is is respect you. I cannot force you to do anything, and I don't even want to force you to you know to do anything if it's you know. If it's against your abilities of uh, whatever it may be, uh, your your faith, your you, you know your religion or whatever it may be, uh, yeah, I am not one to go, that that would push it on you. But if the province comes down and says that you have to do something, you can't you oh, you're not going to stop them from do not taking the vaccine or whatever they want. But you can't you have to stop them from using a facility because the province says you have to. That is correct, <laughs> and, and we had to do that. We yeah. had to actually close down one of our arenas because it was run by uh, individuals from the community. And uh, what happened, they didn't want to uh, take the <laughs> vaccination. We cannot open up mm-hmm. because the vaccination wasn't uh, present. And uh, therefore they uh, walked away and, and we had to close the arena for two years. Oh, wow. So getting back to that, the, 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 the question, though, but oh, besides those understanding of sort of the, 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 what the municipality plays and how you might react to municipal or federal or provincial jurisdictional questions, do you think people understand what's going on at town hall? Uh, like, do you get a sense that people are coming to council meetings or no, watching? <laughs> no, no. Matter of fact, uh, that is very present on the election night. Uh, I cannot remember exactly what percentage came out to vote, but it wasn't very high. Oh, you know, that that, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, going door to door, that it was very evident that uh, the people just felt uh, we could not be trusted, and they are taking, and I'm not slamming the door on nobody, but you know they they are upset with the feds and and maybe even the provincial at, in some areas, and they are. Trickling it down, yeah. that to us, and uh, you know what my my model would be, uh, you know, my integrity, and, and my, I would you know try and be as honest as absolutely possible. I mean, there might be sometimes you say something you're not quite uh, certain as to 
what you have said, and then therefore uh, it can become a lie, right? And so I want to flip the script a little bit. I want to talk about the RM as a whole. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask this question, but but I want to preface it as I always do, that this is a conversation between the Reeve and myself. This is not a motion of counsel, a direction of counsel, or a policy of counsel. This is your opinion and your opinion alone. In your opinion, as of recording this right now, what is the biggest challenge facing the RM of Hanover? Biggest well, growth is always a challenge because we have we have grown very quickly and uh, some of our infrastructure is aged uh, i'll take arenas or arenas both are uh, centennial years 67 they both need attention and a lot of attention and uh, the f- the cost of of uh, either building or uh, repairing what we need to or f- you know add on uh, that is just it, without the feds and the provincial, we cannot do nothing. Like, it's just too gr- too great. So we are recording this about two weeks after the provincial budget was tabled, a week and a bit after the we- uh, provincial budget was tabled. Uh, political question time. Did you see anything in this provincial budget that would help address some of those growth concerns that you have? At this point, I have not. Okay. But I am hoping that uh, we have the opportunity to, uh, we, we actually met with uh, Brandon Burley last week. and uh, uh, Who is your local MLA, the Minister of uh, Sports and Tourism as well, right? Yes, yeah. okay. So he, uh, he was telling us that we would be happy with the, uh, the budget. And uh, I am uh, leaning on those words. And I would like to meet with him yet at some point in time and <laughs> see if we can... Uh, if we can put a smile on the, or a community and or municipalities. So while you wait for that, because by the time this airs, I'm not sure if you've met with them or not, but while you wait or while you hope that this government will come to the table and address some of the growth issues that you have, you are still growing. You are still yes. growing as a community and you have to, as you at the Royal you, as you in council, have to balance that growth with the people who live there. And you and I both know because we both look outside the window and we go to the grocery stores and we buy our groceries. We understand that things are getting more expensive for people. How do you balance growth of your community without doing it on the backs of the people who live there? Because these people, the, the residents of the RM, and I don't want to say they're struggling because I don't wish that upon anyone, but there are financial challenges that a lot of people are addressing right now, and you could impact their lives, whether that be going to the grocery store every three weeks instead of every week to get groceries. How do you sell or balance the needs of your community with the needs of the individuals in your community? I wish I had a clear script and an answer for that. It's, that is a very tough one. Uh, but it's an important it's one, though. It's very, very important. And, and uh, something that actually we, th- during our budget, we have, uh, that has been on our, our minds an awful lot. Uh, we have, uh, our budget is going to be released very soon, and there will be a very, very minimal increase. Uh, very minimal. And, uh, you know, we have a choice. Do we take services away? Or do we up the taxes a little bit? Because, like you said, everything, the fuel, the maintenance parts, the parts, everything has almost a third for sure, right, has gone up. Somewhere we have to absorb that cost. And, and we, the, the, the maintenance and repairs and, and the fuel bills and all that is still there. So I have one last question because I'm cautious of time, and uh, you, you, this is you're here to go uh, meet with people and go to the showroom. But I want to ask the million dollar question: In your opinion, what makes the RM such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Thank you for the question, and I would like to answer that one because I think every municipal leader knows how to answer it. So RM of Hanover is, we in the Southeast are in a Bible Belt, uh, faith-based communities. Uh, What makes us unique? We as a large portion are farm-based, either with livestock or or, uh, grains of some form. 
and uh, so a lot of employment is is through the farming. We have, uh, I know at one point in time, we had a sign, this is going back a uh, number of years, but we had a sign up on the highway that we were the capital of small businesses. So that hasn't changed. I, I, I'm not saying we're capital, but we are. We have a lot of small businesses, so we are self-employed, uh, very often with one, two, three uh, people that the, you know they will employ. So that is what has what I think what helps handle being somewhat unique. We also have five LUDs within our communities, which I think there's nine in the province. So that makes us unique, also. <laughs> So we do have businesses within the communities that, that also help us a lot. So what makes Hanover tick? I think, you know, the, the farming capacity, at the capacity of farming that we do have and uh, the business that we do have, uh, we, uh, we, we can self-sustain in a lot of ways. So. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor to sit down and chat with municipal leaders. Um, I'm looking forward. As I've said on the show, if you come on the show, I'm going to come to your community. So before I leave, Brandon, I'm coming to your community to go visit some of the great places and sort of explore what your community of Hanover has to offer uh, Manitoba. So I'm looking forward to being out there and exploring. So thank you so much for doing this. Perfect. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, the local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues affecting municipalities. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. Thank you.